Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In the previous video, we designed this app. This is our animal park. We've designed this screen, which is Animal Sounds. In this video, we're actually going to code this. So let's start back where we began. We first designed Welcome to Jamie Dent's Amazing Animal Park app. This is where we started with. We have a picture of ourselves. We have Welcome to My Amazing Animal Park. We hear, hear animal sounds. When I click on this, let's hear some amazing animal sounds. It takes us to our animal sound screen, but none of these things work. And that's because we have not coded it here. If we look at the design. The design looks great. We've added a bunch of sound effects. We've added player background music, added all our images for all our animals, our 12 different animals. We've used some layouts and we've played with the width to do fill parent. We also added in spacers to give it this little small spacing in between here. Well, the design looks great. Now we actually need to get it to work. So let's get to it. So let's go to blocks. And the first thing we wanna do is let's code this home button. So yes, yeah, someone can press back on their phone or tablet like this, but you see on ours, it actually killed the app. So let's relaunch this and we're gonna do emulator. So now that we have it relaunched, we wanna take care of when someone presses back, we want them to actually go back to the home, to our screen one. Also, if they press this button, we want them to go back to screen one. So let's program our home button first and then let's take care of this action when someone presses the back button. So this is our image. We're gonna click on image. We're gonna pull out this clicked when someone actually clicks it. Now the reason we can pull this out and it will work if we come back to designer for image, we made sure that it was clickable right here. As long as we made it clickable, then this will work. But if I uncheck that, so let's do that. I'm gonna uncheck this and code it and let's see what happens. So what I wanna do is simply go back to home. There's two ways to do it. I can go to control. We've done this before and use this, open another screen with screen name. And then I could simply put in a text box and type screen one. So screen one, I have to make or spell it exactly like this. It would take me back to here. But we came here from screen one. So I can actually simply close this screen and it would take me back to screen one. Let me show you that. Let's click on control and right below, open another screen, you can see there is a closed screen. So I can do that and that would do the exact same thing. So let's try both. I'm gonna do this one first. I'm gonna do open another screen with screen name. So that's gonna take me back to the screen. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna swap these out and let's see what happens. So now if I click on this, nothing's happening. Well, why isn't anything happening? Remember what I did back on designer? I did not click clickable. So that's why I'm telling you to make sure you do clickable. So now that I do clickable, and now if I click it, Welcome to Jamie Gant's Amazing Animal Park app. You can see it takes me back. Now let's go to hear animal sounds. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. So now you see that works. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna put this in. Now let's see if this works. Welcome to Jamie Gant's Amazing Animal Park app. So you can see I can come back here. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. Welcome to Jake. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. So you can see either one works. I'm going to leave close screen for now. And remember, I want to take care of this action. So this is if someone presses back on this screen. Well, where can I get that action from? Would it be up here? Well, let's think about it for a second. It has to be somewhere in blocks. But this is being it's an event, which will be a brown block. And the event is happening when I'm pressing this back on this screen. So actually, we're gonna click on the screen. And let's look at the brown block. So let's scroll up. And if you see right here, back is pressed. So if someone presses this on this screen, it's this block, which is an event. And let's just test it. We're not gonna do close. Let's stay right on here. I'm gonna just show to show you. Let's put some text in there. And we're gonna say testing back pressed works. So over here, let's try it. Testing back pressed works. 
Testing back pressed works. So I can see, I know this is working. So now let's go ahead and do what we want to do. And we're going to say closed. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to pull in closed. But let's think about when we came from home, it said going to hear animal sounds. So I want to also speak and say going to home. So why not? Let's talk. So I'm going to click on text to speech. I'm going to put that above. I'm going to go to text. I'm going to go here and going back to home. Now, something I didn't teach you before, you can duplicate blocks. You can right click on this and do duplicate and then put that up here. So now if someone presses image home or if somebody presses back, it will go back to our home screen. Well, there's a principle in computer science called DRY, D-R-Y. Do not repeat yourself. Pretty much you want to modulize code, which is just simply means make procedures when you see common code over and over again. That way you're changing it in one location, not a bunch of locations. So how can we modularize this? These two things are exactly the same. We don't want to repeat ourselves. All we're going to do is click on procedures. We're going to pull out a procedure. We're going to call it go to home. I'm going to pull all this and put this inside of here. And let's add in our comments. So I'm going to right click to add comment. First thing I'm going to say is speak to the user. And two is go back to home to screen one. So there we go. So now that I pull that code here, I can actually call it. Since I made it a procedure, I'm going to put that inside of there. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm also going to go back to procedures and put this inside of here. So this is what we're, we're talking about when we're saying do not repeat yourself versus having these two blocks and both of these. I'll make a procedure, put the blocks in there and then simply call this procedure go to home. So I'll put that up there. So now we have this and this working. Let's work on our animal sounds. So again, every in app design, every event you can program something. So what we want to program is when I click on this lion, which is an image, and you can see that on the left side here, this image, I want to play this sound file. So first I need the event from lion. So I'm gonna click on image, image.click. I'm gonna pull that in and I'm gonna go back and just double check my image, it is clickable. If you click this in the emulator on your app or on your phone and it's not playing the sound and you know the code is working, make sure to check that you have clickable selected. So this is the first event when someone touches that lion right now it does nothing. What I want it to do is actually play the sound file. So I have lion and I have play. Let's test it. So pretty simple. So I'm going to show you one more time and then I'm going to tell you to pause the video and go complete the rest of your animal. So let's do our Cobra. So first thing I'm going to do is go to my image Cobra, which is right here. I'm going to pull out the event click when some user touches it. I need, I want to play the Cobra sound. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I can see I have a sound Cobra here. I'm going to pull in play. Now let's test our Cobra. <laughs> So you can see it is actually working. Go ahead and pause the video and program the other animals in this app. Okay, now that we're back, you should have coded and tested all of your sounds. So let's test mine. There's a lion, snake, Alligator. So they all work, but we have a problem. Some sounds are overplaying, so this might be longer than the snake. So like for example, I'm hearing both sounds. I only want to hear one sound.
So how can we do that? If I click on Lion, I don't want it to keep playing Sound Cobra. I just want it to play Lion. I don't want it to hear other sound effects. Hmm, think about that. How could we actually do that? But we do have this play all button. So let's just actually think about how we could program this. So if we go to the very top, here is button play all. And how would you program this? If I wanted to play all the same animals at the same time, what would I do? Well, I could put all these different sound effects inside of here and then press play. So let's try that. So I'm going to do sound lion, sound cobra that play, sound alligator that play, sound tiger that play, sound rhino that play. Now I want to show you a, another trick. So this is sound rhino. I still have about six other people. I can actually duplicate this and you see this drop down here. I can simply select the next thing. So I can change this to tiger, for example, or I already have tiger. So I might do, I don't have alpaca. So you can click on these drop downs and actually select other things. So let's just do it again. Let's do duplicate. And I do not have a bear. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this. You can do it either way. This is hippo, I do not have. I just added bear. I do not have hyenas. I do not have bison. And I do not have peacock, elephant. And then I added alpaca at the top. So I can just keep it in order. I'm gonna pull this like that. And bear is next to hippo. So now, if we test this, button play all will actually be play all the sounds. So this is going to play all the animals. So I like that effect. And when I go home, I want to do the exact same thing. I want to play all the animals, say going back to home and close the home screen. Well, do I want to go ahead and go over here and copy all these back into go to home? That would be repeating myself. But remember the dry principle, do not repeat yourself. So what should I do with this? If I know I want to do this exact same thing, if you think about it, I should make another procedure. So let's come on up here, go to procedures. I'm going to pull in a procedure and I'm just going to call it play all animals. And then all I'm going to do is put this in here and now since I made this procedure, I can go to procedures. I have this play all animals. I can put that back in here so it still works. And I can also put it inside of going to home. So I'm gonna click on procedures, play all animals. So let's test this now. Welcome to Jamie Gant's amazing animal park app. So you saw it actually worked. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. I want to move this up so you can just hear it again. It's going to play all of them, but once it gets to the other screen, it's going to cut off. So let's go ahead and try that again. Welcome to Jamie Gant's amazing animal park app. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. So there you go. Now we have play all animals whenever we go home, but also if somebody presses the play button. So I wanted you to think about how could we simply play one track? So I don't want the snake to play over the lion. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. But I simply want, when I click down here, I only want one to play. So if I click snake and then I click lion, I don't want to hear snake anymore. I simply want to play lion. So there's a bunch of ways you can do this. We're going to do it in an old fashioned way. So way back in the day, you had a CD player and the one CD player, you would put one CD in there and then it would play that one CD. So we're going to do a procedure called CD player and we're going to pass it the different CDs or the different animal sound to that CD player. So we're going to make one procedure. When someone touched image lion, we're going to pass the CD track lion to our CD player procedure and play that one sound. So let's get started. So I'm going to go to procedures. I'm going to pull out. Let's just call it CD player. Now I'm going to move this up. I'm going to move this up for a CD player. We need a way to pass a CD to it. 
more the animal sound to it. Well, I told you before in the previous videos, anytime you see this little settings icon means you can modify this block. Let's click on that. And you can see right now, if I wanted input, I can simply drag my input from the left to the right, connect it, and it would give me an input. So since I need the correct sound from each of these animals, I'm gonna need an input. I'm gonna drag from the left, connect it to the right. I'm gonna name it animal sound. So now that I have this animal sound, if you go to procedure, look at how this one looks. When I call CD player, I need to pass the animal sound. So let's just do lion. So if I put this in here for now, I'm gonna move these down some. I'm gonna get rid of sound lion play. So let's just get our lion working. So the animal sound I want to pass is my lion sound. Let's go back to designer and you can see this is my sound lion. Well, I don't wanna pass this actual sound effect. I really wanna pass this, the source, which is lion roar.wave. So this is a property of sound lion, but remember we can access properties in our blocks using the green blocks. So I'm gonna go find sound lion. I'm going to get the source and pass that to our CD player. So let's go to blocks. Again, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna find sound lion. I'm gonna look at my green blocks because these are my properties. And you can see here is the source. Now there's two source. There's a light green source and a dark green source. This is if I wanted to change it from a lion sound to maybe an elephant sound. But this is if I wanna get whatever the current source is, which is that lion roar dot wave. I wanna get that. I'm gonna put this you see it works right there. So now, if we test this, what do you think will happen? Let's see. Well, nothing's happening. Well, why do you think nothing's happening? Well, if you look down here, we actually didn't do anything. So even though we're passing the line file here, we're not doing anything. So let's actually add a comment here so we can know what we're doing. So this is called CD player. So we want to say place the animal sound to the CD and then two, play the CD. So we're going to need to have one player so that when we pass in whatever file, it would only play that file. In our blocks, right now you see we have player background music. We're going to code that in a second. We need another player. So let's go back here. we go to media. I'm going to drag in a player and let's just Rename it PLY for player, CD, player, animals. So now that we have that, I'm not gonna set the source, I'm gonna set that inside of code. Let's go to blocks, scroll down. I have the player background music, and I want that one. I want this one, player, CD, player, animals. Click on that. First thing I wanna do is place this sound into the CD. So I wanna get the source. This is the dark green one. I'm not going to do the light green one, which means getting whatever it is. Right now that's set to nothing, but I wanna change it. So I'm gonna grab this and connect it. And I wanna set the source of whatever they pass in. So when lion, we pass in the lion roar.wave, which is the source of that, it's gonna come here. And I wanna put that into the CD. So you can't click on this. That thinks you want to rename it. You can do it two ways. You can go up to variables and do get variable. And then you can select it here as animal sounds because it knows that. Or you can simply mouse over and then this pop-up window will happen and I can grab it and put it here. So there's two ways. There's multiple. In programming, there's a lot of ways to do the same thing. So now that we have, that's step one. We put the animal sound into the CD player. Step two is to play it. So let's go back to our CD player animals and we're just gonna click start. And that's the two steps that we need to complete for this. So let's see if our sound lion roars. So again, here's what's happening. We made a procedure called CD player. We are passing in the lion source, which is the CD, the sound we wanna play. It's coming here, putting it into our one player and then playing that sound. But well, remember, we started this because we didn't want to hear, when I click snake, it was a long sound. And I click lion, the lion was still playing over the snake sound. So let's really see if this is truly working by doing our snake. So we're gonna get rid of sound cobra. We're going to go back up to procedures. We're gonna drag in our CD player. And 
and what is going to be the source? Where are we going to get this from? We're going to scroll down. We're going to look for Sound Cobra. We're going to get the source. And again, this Sound Cobra source, if I come back over here and I look at Sound Cobra, it's really this file, cobra.mp3. So that is what this is. So I'm passing this to the CD player and then I'm playing it. So let's see if it only plays one animal sound right now. So you can see the snake sound stopped. See, it only plays. See how long the snake sound is? But since I'm doing it this way, the only way I'm playing it is through one CD player. It will immediately stop, make the next lion sound, puts it in there, and then start it. So let's try it again. So look, the snake is this long. But if I play the snake, you can see the snake stops and the lion plays. Or I can do the same thing. Look, look how long the lion is. So if I do, you see it stops it. So there we have it. So pause the video and go convert all of your animals down here to use the CD player function that we have created. Unpause the video when you've completed that step. Here's a quick way you can delete blocks. If you select them and you press delete on your keyboard, you can do that. Now, go ahead and fill in these blocks with what they should be. So now we have all of our sounds and it only will play one animal when you click it. Let's see. See our elephant is not working. Why do you think that is? So number one, we need to go check the source. And then number two, we need to make sure that we made our image elephant clickable. So let's go do that. Let's go to the designer. Let's click on our sound elephant and we see it has a source so it should be playing. So the next place we're going to check is when I'm clicking this and I'm clicking it because right here it's image elephant that click. When I'm clicking it nothing is happening. It should be playing our elephant. I'm going to go back to designer, scroll down, click on our elephant and you can see right here clickable is not actually checked. Let's select that. Now <laughs> So we're almost done. Remember we added in this accelerometer. So the accelerometer, all we're gonna do is if you have a phone or tablet, when you actually shake the phone, we're gonna play all the animal sounds. So we actually already have a play all animal sounds thing. So we're just gonna scroll down, accelerometer sensor. So you can see you have two events, acceleration change. This is what they used when Pokemon Go was a very popular game and people were driving um, while they were playing Pokemon Go trying to catch Pokemon. If your acceleration was faster than a human could actually walk or run, you would get a pop-up saying, hey, it's not safe to play Pokemon Go while driving. So they use the accelerometer to know how fast you were moving and then give you another warning to make sure you're good. But we're gonna use this one, shaking. And all we're gonna do is when someone shakes the phone, we want to play all our animals. So let's really think about this drive principle. Do not repeat yourself. So. I'm calling play all animals from three places and we're using do not repeat yourself. I'm calling it from accelerometer shaking. I'm calling it from go to home and I'm also calling it from here. So if play all animals did not exist, let's look how many times I would be repeating myself. So let's actually pull these out. So this doesn't exist, how would I do this? So if I did not have, if I just disable that, if I did not have play all animals, this is how my code would look. I would have play all these sounds, and this one I have play all these 12 sounds, and this one I have play all these sounds. I'm duplicating 12, 24, 36 lines of code. But say I wanted to add something else, say I added 
10 more animals. I would have 10 more animals here, 10 more animals here, and 10 more animals here. That's the reason we want to actually make one location. So if I add more animals to our screen, I simply have to add them in one place. I don't have to add them in three locations. So actually let's get rid of this and let's put in our play all animals. Let's get rid of this, let's put in our play all animals and let's get rid of, pull this up so you don't lose Texas beach first, which gets rid of that and put our play all animals in here. And let's go ahead and enable or play all animals. So that kind of emphasizes the point of why you want to use the DRY, do not repeat yourself principle in computer science. Last thing we want to do is right here, we have play background music. Well, we're not actually playing it. Let's go back and let's look at that. Player background music. We have it set up to the jungle sound. We set it up, but it's not playing. Well, remember you have to code that. And what we want to do is when this screen launches, we want to start playing our background music. So we're gonna to go to animal sounds and we're gonna pull in this block, initialize. And all we want to do is go down to our player background music and we're going to click play. So let's go home, come back here and see what happens if our background music plays. Now everything here is actually working. So we're gonna go home. Welcome to Jamie Gant's Amazing Animal Park app. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. So you can see it's playing a different sound that's now playing that. Here's a quick challenge. Let's say we have text to speech. Let's say I wanted it to also say the lion or say cobra or alligator. How could I do that? We'll already have text to speech here. I can actually put this in here and type in lion. But then I can also do text to speech here and type in cobra. And then I would have to do text to speech here and type in alligator. Well, what am I doing? I'm repeating myself. So Again, a quick challenge, pause the video and see if you can figure out how to call the animal name and play the sound without repeating yourself. Go ahead and pause and give it a try. <laughs> Now that you tried that challenge, let me give you the answer. So I do not want to repeat myself all the way down 12 times. All of these are calling CD player. CD player is up here and is taking in the sound. Well, a procedure doesn't just have to take in one thing, it can take in two. So I'm gonna update my comment. Play the animal sound. I'm gonna make that number three. Two, I'm gonna say speak the, the animal's name. So for me to say lion versus cobra, I need another input. So I'm gonna click back on this. I'm gonna drag another input over and I'm gonna call it animal name. So versus putting text-to-speech in all of these, I'm just gonna put a text-to-speech in my CD player. And the message I wanna speak is the animal's name. So now I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of this. And I'm gonna delete that. But look what happened to all of our code blocks. I've added an extra input, so it's saying I need to give that input. Let's reorganize these so we can see everything. So now that I added the extra input here, so now that I added the extra input here, I need to fill these in. So I can simply go here, pull these in, and I have lion. And another quick shortcut, if on your keyboard, if I select this and I start to type T, E, X, T, press enter, you can see it will find this text block for me. So here I'm gonna type Cobra. And before I go any further, let's test these two. So you can see it's working. Now let's test these and see what happens when I press it. I did not give it an input. So what do you think is gonna happen? It's saying false. What's happening is nothing is here. The animal name is nothing. So it's saying false versus saying error. Let's 
go ahead and quickly test that our app is working. It should say the animal name and you should hear it. So. Cobra. Tiger. Bear. Hippo. Rhino. Hyena. This one, if you check, that's why I always say make sure you check. I'm clicking this and nothing is happening. Well, I know this code is correct. So again, I need to check the bison source and I need to make sure that I made my image clickable. So let's check the bison source. So first we're gonna go to bison. They have a source. So I know the next area I should check is I should go to bison. And you can see right here, it is not clickable. So when I do that. Bison, 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 cobra, dragon, tiger, alligator, rhino, hippo, bear. And with that, we have completed this assignment. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save and then turn it into your teacher.